guys today on this stream we are doing the top 10 best albums in my opinion my personal list of 2022 so far my list is kind of all over the place so don't expect just metalcore or like prog or whatever there's going to be a decent amount of variety too much chit chat let's get onto the list so let's fuck do it number 10 is a prog band okay these guys you know these guys really have found a niche of sounding like a whole bunch of different kind of prog bands whether it's like you know dream theater with lots of synth they also sound like cynic at times because they're very atmospheric these guys can shred i was very impressed with this record when we checked it out live on twitch and my number 10 goes to persephone metanoia it's very very busy music so here's another song from them So yeah, you're hearing a lot of clean vocals. If this is like your first time hearing this band, they actually have like a strong death metal component to their music too. So that song is cool. It's one of their singles. Uh, but this song is just an instrumental, just badass track. It's like almost 10 minutes long, I believe. Uh, number nine is one of the most unique metal records that I've heard in a while, and that's why it's going to be in my top 10, but it's just wicked fun. Um, it's not an everyday listen, really, but there's no denying anytime I put this record on, it's just fun. Like, there's, there's a decent variety on this album, too, which I really like, uh, but these guys sound like unlike anybody else they're doing really well especially in north america because these guys are from india and they play indian folk metal and i'm talking about bloody wood but the album is called rack shack come on tell me that rhythm and the melodies are not so infectious holy crap it's so upbeat it's so energetic um they also mix in like lots of different instruments uh this song has a really good breakdown Number eight was actually kind of a disappointment when I first reacted to it and reviewed it. But after some time, I realized that the main singles are just like a good portion of the songs on this record. I keep going back to, but it's definitely not going to be in my top five because like the album is so inconsistent. Although every song is like good, there's only a couple of songs that are great, but those great songs I keep going back to. And that's why I have to put this record in my top 10 and it goes to Bad Omens. The death of peace of mind. When the curtains call the time, will we both go yeah, so this record, like uh, Bad Omens, they've always been kind of like a Brain of the Rise and copycat. Um, but I feel like with this new record, they're actually kind of branching out from that quite a bit. Uh, but these guys, the songs are all over the place, which kind of like makes it a con, but as well as a pro. Uh, because, yeah, there is a big amount of inconsistency with the record. Uh, but it's still really good. So like this song, Nowhere to Go, has like a strong pop punk kind of vibe to it. The issue that I had with this album is that one of the main singles I put out was one of the best songs because it shows like their heavy side and Bad Omens is so good at writing heavy music when they know how to be heavy. Unfortunately, the album is not really a metalcore album, which is fine, but it's more of a pop rock album. The thing is, one of their main singles is a metalcore song and it, it's so, so good, dude. And I really wish there was more tracks like Artificial Suicide. So next one is, um, this is a very underground band, which is unfortunate because, well, their music is definitely not mainstream at all. It's very, it's progressive, it's mathy, and it has a strong post element. So all of those genres are a little bit more niche, and that's why uh, this band isn't getting talked about too much. But yeah, this is a really, really good record. It's going to be on a lot of people's, like, you know, top three best albums of the year, at least this so far. For me, I just have other preferences, but this, there's no denying that this is such a well-crafted record. I'm talking about Rolo Tomasi, where myth becomes memory. Yeah, so like this song is, it, it's chaotic, it's uh, energetic. So they, these guys have like 
two different sounds. So if this is your first time hearing them, well then listen to this track because this track shows a much different side to the band, which is a big integral part to their sound, which is the post rock elements. So really, if you're a fan of like Dillinger Escape Plan and that kind of chaotic like math chord, then you're going to like this. But also if you're a fan of like Sigur Ra's or explosions in the sky, like that kind of post rock, then you're probably going to like this too. All right, number six is a record that I literally just heard. Honestly, this is a band that when I first heard one of their songs, I was blown away by, you know, they really captured the nostalgic sound of post hardcore, but they still man managed to make it sound refreshing. Um, so when I heard the new album, I had some good, like decent expectations for it. They managed to surpass it. The record just constantly has so many surprises. It's just a really well-crafted record, better than I expected. And it goes to Static Dress, Rouge Carpet Disaster. Yeah, I've been listening to this record a lot lately. Yeah, so it has like a strong under oath or only chasing safety vibes and like uh, scary kids, scaring kids, drop dead gorgeous. So if you like know those bands that I'm mentioning, then you're probably going to like this a lot. So yeah, these guys know how to be heavy when they need to be heavy, but they can also do soft really well. So who said it in the chat, but Marisol is a beautiful song. Holy crap, this song really floored me when I heard it live. five on my list is uh it's not metal yeah i'm really impressed with the new kendrick lamar album as expected um and they're the new album mr morale and the big steppers oh, yeah. take off the foo foo take off the cloud chase take off the wi-fi take off the fabricate streams and the microwave memes it's a real world outside take off your idols so yeah i know this is going to be like the one-off pick especially for like a generally like metal list um the thing is about kendrick why i've always liked his music is that he does play around with like time signatures he plays around with like uh key changes and beat changes his music is like pretty progressive at times um where i feel like a lot of rap tends to be quite generic and sometimes the lyrics would be really cringy kendrick is much more personal with his lyrics and um like i said the songwriting the flows of the mu uh, of his music are really really cool so Metal Burp, quit with the rap bullshit. Okay, guys, I get it. I get it, all right? Oh, man, this record really clicked with me. So coming at number four is an instrumental record. Um, you know, a lot of people think it's just like uh, musicianship kind of wankery. Not for me. I think this record has like a really good sense of repetition, melody, and kind. Of, it's hypnotic. That's kind of the best way to uh, sum it up. It constantly has repeating patterns, but it's so complex that uh, when you're listening to it, you feel kind of perplexed listening to it, but it's also like really captivating for me. Um, maybe also it helps that I play guitar so I can hear some of the things going on. I can visually see what's happening too on the guitar. So it, the album's not gonna be for everyone, but I really, really like Animals as Leaders, Parhesia. Dude, the music is just wild. Like, it's definitely not an easy listening experience, but like I was saying, it's like hypnotic. The amount of repetition and just the technicality behind it is just mind blowing to listen to. Red Mizo, this song has one of the coolest sounding breakdowns I've heard all year. Their music videos are really interesting too. So yeah, that pick makes the prog heads happy, but we're going to move on to something else. Uh, the next one is not prog. Well, it can be a little bit progressive at times, only because their sense of structures and flow is 
it's more mathy i'll say it's more mathy than progressive because these guys have a strong math core element um they have like a little bit of a southern twang very similar to every time i die and dillinger escape plan so since both of those bands have broken up gray haven is going to be filling that spot with their new album this bright and beautiful world <laughs> Uh, they also have like clean vocals too so it's not just like you know screaming the whole way through so a good example of this is all candy this song is much more of just like a rock ballad and it's a lot less chaotic and mathy this song again just chaotic it it's super energetic All right, all right. Let's move on to the next one, which is probably going to be the most controversial one on this list uh, because this is one of the most divisive records of the year. I personally loved it. I think this whole record is a vibe. Uh, it's funny because when I listen to just the singles on their own, I don't love it. But when I listen to it start to finish, it hits a lot different. Uh, to me, this is so refreshing in this convoluted metalcore scene with just like gents breakdowns that having a strong EDM influence, I think works really well for this band. I'm obviously talking about North Lane Obsidian. People either hate it or love it. To me, it's such a cool record for a band that is like, you know, they could just do the same metalcore approach that they've been doing for years, right? Or they could try expanding on their sound and tapping into an, like a style of music that has been done but not in this kind of way because north lane has like almost a post hardcore influence so like it sounds kind of refreshing it does, like you know there's static x there's other bands that have mixed electronics like the algorithm progressive metal but north lane has a different take at it and like this song it sounds like something like dead mouse would write they're not sacrificing you know being artistic and exper being experimental they're not writing generic kind of music to sell to their fans and i find that extremely refreshing for a band that's pretty late in their career well not late but you know has a good amount of longevity instead of having breakdowns like they've had many times over their discography they're doing like techno beats It doesn't sound cheesy. It sounds like legit, like an actual EDM artist that's been around for like uh, many years. To me, it just sounds like really high quality EDM with really high quality uh, metalcore. Another song, Obsidian, the title track. I think this song is epic. <laughs> Um, all right, all right, time for number one. When I first heard it early in this year, <laughs> it hasn't shifted. And uh, for good reason, this record is just wicked, wicked fun. This is everything I love about metal music. Again, just a wicked fun time listening to this record. And it goes to Enterprise Earth, The Chosen. You know, it is a deathcore record, but even just calling it deathcore doesn't seem to be doing it justice because some of my favorite albums are ones that are a little bit more genre bending. So to me, this record from Enterprise Earth, The Chosen, primarily a deathcore record, but it has strong metalcore influence, but it also has strong progressive metal elements. Some of their songs clocking at seven minutes and eight minutes long, and I love that. Uh, most of their songs are like five to six minute range, and I those are some of my favorite song durations in music too. They also throw in like thrash metal and old school like 80s like hair metal into their music too so there's so many different elements of metal music all thrown into this one record and it's just wicked fun from a guitar perspective because there's so many memorable riffs vocals are really really good and but yeah enterprise earth this album is just wicked fun this is one of the best songs of the year called overpass Yeah, so they got the disgusting breakdowns. I got too many examples, so this song, you couldn't save me. Uh, the riffage is great.
example, another example, they have no honor. This is when I go into thrash metal. And then one of my favorite moments on the record is from the title track, The Chosen, which is a eight minute and 34 second long song. Like I said, it's just a really, really fun record. It's riffy, it's progressive, it's heavy, it's melodic. It's everything that I love about metal music. And that's why it's such a fun record, man. But guys, guys, I gotta shut the hell up, all right? What is your number one, okay? I, I think a lot of people have said...